I was saying, I really love walking just down the street here to a little brick and mortar shop. It's an inviting shop. They have a sign out front that is inviting by itself. If you walk in there, it's always a good experience. Everyone I've talked to in the store down the street has always just had, I've always had great experiences, conversations, and they're not about business. They're not about anything in particular. It just changes from day to day. It's always a welcoming time to walk in the Shining Soul Candle, Candle Company, um, which is like three doors down from where we're at tonight. And tonight's guests are two of the three founders of Shining Soul Candle Company. Sarah Rodriguez was not able to join us tonight, uh, but we do have Darren Blevins. So give it up for Darren. Thank you. Thank you. And Pete Manassas. No. no. <laughs> Pete Evick, um, who, who was the original uh, idea and inspiration behind Shining Soul Candle Company. So I, I want to welcome both of you to the stage. So give it up for both of you. Good on sound? I guess. I look like Forrest Gump right there. <laughs> I doubt that. We can you know, see when he's regardless. I th I th we're not on a shrimp boat. All right. So I think we're good. Um, but Evan will tell us if we're bad on sound. So uh, <laughs> let's start. So I want to kind of jump right in because I think we have a lot of ground we can cover tonight between business and music. And I want to let some people get to know the two of you. And feel free, please, to incorporate experiences with Sarah, who's not able to join us. Sure. Uh, we don't want to talk bad about her, right? So I don't want to do that. That's it. But feel free, feel free to bring her into the picture as best as we can. Um, you're both from Manassas. You Morning grew up race. here. You, you've been the two of you have been best friends since like five years old. Probably a little after that, but for... Yeah, I don't remember meeting you. It's been that long. I don't remember meeting. We yeah. both probably went to Lock which Loman, is always, which is yeah. 10 minutes that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we've known each other. So we just knew each other. You went to school. Right. Back then, you went to school, so you, you knew each other. Yeah. So, yeah. It, you know, I think yeah. you are you were a year older than me in school, right? Right. So, yeah, so... Yeah. 1978. Let's just say it started in 1978. Love it. Well, and, and, <laughs> and I can just say that... The number of best best friends or people that I had that kind of relationship from that time frame, I can count definitely on one hand. So I think I don't know if that's important or not, but I think yes, it's important. It is. Yeah. And the older you get, the more um, you know, especially in my travels, you meet uh, a lot of people and and you become more and more grateful of the friends you have that from that long to go. I, I consider myself very lucky to to you know have like Darren and there's a couple others that, that were there from day one. Yeah. You know? I uh, I often talk about in the music industry and like, you wanna just jump right in, right? Absolutely. <laughs> because Let's do it, it. it kind of plays into this I've Perfect. I, I I've been talking about this um at, right now everyone's seen the Queen movie. Uh, yes. The Queen movie is the big hit of the world, but but uh there's been a movie about Ray Charles called Ray. Mm -hmm. Um there was the movie about um, Johnny Cash, which right. I, I forget, what was Walk that? The Walk the Line. Yeah. And, and, and then there's there's kind of these comical movies called Rockstar, and uh, and there, what was the other one? It was the, the Broadway play that turned into the movie um, with Tom Cruise. Yeah, right, Tom Cruise. And, and anyway, there's, there's um, in, all the, in all the entertainment movies, there's this moment that, that strikes me. It actually, it actually brings tears to my eye. In the, in the Queen movie, it, 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 it sunk my heart because I've gone through it. And in the entertainment world, there's always this moment, and every one of these movies has this moment where the entertainer turns around, he looks, and he's surrounded by strangers. No. And, and that's the defining moment in all of those movies. Strangers. 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 All of a sudden, he didn't even realize it, and he's replaced all of his real friends and all of his real family. The marriages end, everything ends, and you turn around, and you don't even know the people that are living in your home, and that you're, you, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. Yeah, and in the Queen movie, they, it's it's heartbreaking to see that scene in the Queen. And uh, when those moments happen, more and more as I get older, being in the entertainment industry, I become incredibly grateful to be able to you know get up every day and know a guy that has been there from before I even knew what a guitar was, and a few friends like that. That kind of stuff's important, and, and and to be able to build a relationship and being 40 years old and and have that history with someone it, that that's grounding and it. It's a it's a lifeline sometimes. Man, that's uh, 
I think we're done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, you're absolutely right. It's incredible because the more I grow, the more I do self-reflection, I think back on the friends I can count on, the ones I can call today and know that I can just talk to them about anything. They're still there and they've been there from that time frame right. that long ago and now I don't have the entertainment experience that, that we're talking about here so let's back up for a second um, just talk about so Pete you, you are in the entertainment industry um, you are also a candle company founder and I, and I want to kind of talk about this whole transition into candle company maybe it's not I know you're actively a musician right. but how, so how did you get into the music industry, the entertainment industry. Let's start there. <laughs> oh, I, I, it, to me, like me and Darren growing up, it felt like we all, that's all we wanted to do, all of us, right? right? It was all we wanted to do. I can relate. And, yeah. um, the 80s, the heyday. Yes, know. the hair bands. I, I had a very... Uh, no no we, offense. We, yeah, we don't call it the hair no, bands when you're no, actually... That's my bad. <laughs> don't do that. No. <laughs> that's my bad. <laughs> the, um, the, but, so, I had a very interesting... Um, point of view from my parents that a lot of people don't have is, um, you know, and I, this story, I told this story a million times, but everybody's parents always go, oh, if you want to be a, a, in the music industry, that's great. And if you're one of these kids' parents, and I'm about to say something yeah. that you disagree with, I apologize. <laughs> I, I apologize. If I'm about to inspire them to do something you don't want them to do, I'm so sorry. But, uh, you know, there's always the get the fall back. <laughs> Get the fallback. You got to get a fallback because the music industry does it's it doesn't work. It never works. You know that yeah, that's what everyone absolutely. says. That's what that's what my mother, who don't uh, be an artist, don't be a musician. Yeah, my, yeah. my mother had a completely different point of view. My mother understood the entertainment industry. She was not an entertainer. She wasn't in the entertainment industry, but she did used to go see Elvis in the clubs before Elvis was famous. Like she was a huge fan prior to Elvis was Elvis. Wow. Anyway, my mother would say. Um, being in the entertainment industry is as hard as it is to become a doctor or a lawyer. And when your family gets behind you to do those things, they put everything into it. And that's all you do. You're a doctor 24 hours a day. You study. You, 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 all your money, your family's investments, they refinance their houses. They do everything so that their child can be a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. But, but in the music industry, and my parents were the exact opposite. They said, if that's what you want to do, I'll never forget, my mother said, if you really want to be in the entertainment industry, put yourself in a position where it's the only way you can feed your family. Wow. Is what she said. Make it so that's what you have to do. And to be honest with you, over the years prior to the candle company, I've seen recessions come and recessions go. I've seen my friends lose their jobs. I've, I've seen the whole world panic. And there's always somebody in the darkest of times there's always a bar that someone's going to give me a couple hundred dollars to sing Margarita Bell. <laughs> yeah, and you sing Margarita Bell? Whatever. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? But do you get what yeah, I'm saying? No, absolutely. You know, they're, they're, they're that, music, uh, no, so that's know. just taking the same environment that a lot of us grow up in. That that uh, this So this strikes a personal note with me, because, mm -hmm. I, and I'm going to say this on camera, so I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble, but <laughs> the education system for me is broken. Oh, because sure. we define people, we put them in this box, and we say if you keep, if you go outside the lines of this box, you're going to fail. All right. And what you've just told me is that it's the same thing as if you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to put this commitment into your children. Um, if you're going to be a musician, you're going to put this commitment into your children to let them be a musician. Right. And that right. that I don't know that I've ever heard that before. It's fascinating because yeah, I, mean, I always hear artists, musicians. These other things, you know, under underwater basket weaving. You're never going to make it if that's really what you want to do. Yeah, just do it. You just have, and believing in yourself is part of it too, man. I, I have a unique DNA. Like Darren, Darren still laughs at it to this day. I think I, I just, I think I can do anything. Like I think I can do anything. I love it. Yeah, it, it's just, and so I still try. For that point, yeah. you, just, you just, you just, you know, I actually there's an old. Can I tell any story I want? Absolutely. It's one of my favorite stories in the world, but it's more. It's a Van Halen story, if you don't mind me telling you about the whole classic rock story. But uh, there was pictures in 1983 or 84 of Dave Lee Roth, for anyone who remembers who Dave was. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he had a broken leg for in the, all these pictures, and he, he was doing this interview about, uh, you know, for anyone that remembers, there was a point in our history where that guy was the coolest guy on the planet. Mm -hmm. he, you know, and everybody wanted to be him, and, and it's true. 
in 1984, he, he was, he was, he was yeah. everything. And so, um, but he was, he was larger than life and he had that broken leg and the interview where he's talking about how, um, basically he woke up in a hotel or woke up in the hospital with a broken leg in the morning and Alex, the drummer of the band was standing with him and, uh, David jumped out the window and broke his leg. Yeah. And he said, Dave, he said to Alex, why did you let me do that? And apparently Dave had been going, I believe I can fly. I'm going to prove to everyone I can fly. And Alex goes, says to Dave in the hospital, you convinced me. I believe you can really do it. <laughs> you know? and, and it takes that spirit to win, though. Wow. It takes that spirit to win. That's good. It, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's great. And, and somewhere along the line, I, like, I believe that I just, I believe I can do whatever I want to do. And it's caused me a lot of problems in my life, too. You know, because I, I have a I have a complete disrespect for authority and 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 all that stuff. You know, but I'm not. You know, I don't I don't do any drugs, and I I'm not a criminal in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, my my parents had no rules for me. I didn't have bedtimes. I didn't have to be at dinner time. It was a really weird life I lived. And uh, but I got straight A's, and I I did my work, and I and I liked to be a decent person, and um. It, but there was no rules, so I just didn't think there, there's never been a boundary to me. And Darren will tell you uh, to, to listen to me talk when the cameras are off or when it's just candid. It, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. I just think I can do whatever I want. Like, and, but that's how you succeed, right? We talk about it all the time. We wish we had a reality show. It'd be amazing, <laughs> amazing. Well, the, just, the we stuff just talked about it yesterday. <laughs> it would be. So, <laughs> oh, no, that's that's. Fascinating. I mean, I, I woke up one day. I didn't wake up. It was in the middle of the night. It was. Two o'clock in the morning in my house, and and I've been a career musician my whole life, and I just went, I'm going to start a candle company. But that moment that I said I was going to start a candle company, I didn't just go, I'm going to start a candle company. In my brain, I went, I'm going to take over the world. I'm going to be. It, it was it was company. it was an instant right. it was an instant moment that I'm doing this, and whatever it takes, my goal is before it's over to crush the competition and be the best. I love it. I love it. And so I'm, I'm going to go back and assume that that's kind of the mentality you've had when it comes to the music industry or entertainment industry, too, and kind of what helped you sure. experience some sure. success there. But, but, but it's funny you bring that up, and I hope I, can, I hope I can say what I'm about to say correctly. You have to have an incredibly aggressive attitude to win everything. Um, I, but the difference is when you're so aggressive that you hurt other people. Sure. I am not a push the other guy yes, out of the way guy. On the other toes. I am a help everybody to the top guy. Love it. And 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 we've all always joked, Darren, and every all my friends always joked. I've gotten almost every friend of mine that I could involved in the music industry. I've had four or five of my buddies that I brought to the Brett Michaels band. That you know you know anything I can do to bring people up. Man. So that's that's the difference. And and a lot of people will say to me, you know, why did you you know like my old school friends that are. Real honest, like how did you get to do that? We all wanted to do that. How did yes. you get to do that? I, I wanted to do that. You know, yeah. you know, right. And, and uh, how did you get to that? To that? The, the top of it? And I always tell them that was the difference. The difference is I was as hungry. I was hungrier than everybody else. I wanted it more than everyone else. But I didn't step on anyone's toes. I tried to help everyone else, and I didn't. I didn't backstab anyone. You know, in the music business, there's always oh, if the opening band's on, make sure they don't have enough lights, and make sure they're not as loud as you, and all that stuff. <laughs> Everything, 100%, we're all in it together. Let's and I, it. I think that, that that's that's what helped me through. Man. I think that's what it is. Is, is And same thing down here. As soon as we got down here, uh, you know, Dar Darren was, uh, uh, we, I, don't, I don't even know the word I'm looking for, but it was, um, as far as Darren was concerned, we're coming downtown, and if this isn't a family, we're making it a family. That was Darren's attitude. We're going to go meet everybody, and we're all in this together, and, and, he led that that parade with us with Shining Soul. He was the he was the one that made that happen. And and I didn't know how to take it down here. Mm. I didn't know because because I'd lived in a world completely different, you know. And and um, Darren just went and met everybody, met everybody, and shook their hands and 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 learned everybody's story. I would come in from the road, and Darren would be like, I talked to. You know the people, things I remember, or, or, or things, and or totally vintage, or I talked to this person or that person, and he learned everything about it. Asked them how he could help, every, just like you're talking about here. Yes, Darren right. did that to every store and every restaurant in this on this street. Every every single one he did that the first year we opened. And and what you're saying is what it's all about, man. 
you, you help each other, but you have to be relentless too. But relentless is more cutting the ties, the dead weight on you. Not letting it's, other it's, people decide for you. Yeah and, and, yeah, and not bringing people that aren't as inspired as you. Man. That, that's what you have to do. But not, not hurting people and not kicking people out of the way. That's not how you do it. No, I absolutely believe so. Even if you're a direct competitor to me, I believe in supporting you the best way I can because I think there's, one, there's plenty of business out there for all of us. Right. Even if you're, so if you're a candle company, oh, there's plenty. I right. saw your post today on Facebook. Oh, oh John Mark. Yeah, yeah, John Mark. Outstanding. Yeah. And I, we won't yeah. go into details, but yeah, so that's what it's about yeah, is, yeah. is sharing the experience with but, other people and encouraging them along the way because that's sure. the only way we're all going to make it. That, right. That's outstanding. So let me, let me stop for, there for just a second because Darren's been over here nice and patient. <laughs> uh, Darren. Tell us, so I've got some interesting insights from Darren. Um, uh -oh. He was kind enough to send me a nice list of, Double. here's some yeah. fun facts. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, how short do I need to make this? Yeah. First yeah. of all, I, I, so they're both involved in the music industry. So just to clarify, so Pete is currently the lead guitarist for the Brett Michaels band. Yes, sir. Is it, and, and does an outstanding job there. I've watched some of the videos and seen them in live. Amazing experience. Darren has a little bit different music experience. So Darren is like an avid, like the, if I had to say anything, he'd be the avid heavy metal <laughs> fan. That's true. And also plays in, in bands. Used to play in bands. I you know, may have another one at some point, but yes. Used to I love run, playing. Used to run the largest heavy metal forum Largest heavy metal online forum on, the world. on the you still run it? I do, but Facebook's changed a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But you still run it? It still exists. Yeah. 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 So, um, so Darren, tell us tell us a little bit about your background. Um, so we we talked about school. I know earlier we talked a little bit about Cub Scouts and some things, but whatever background you like to share with us. Yeah, so I was kind of opposite as Pete of Pete. You know, my parents, my dad was a working class. You know, and mom was stay home mom, and then um, which is a job in itself, of yeah, course. Uh, she eventually went and got another job, but there was never you know music was. I remember being in the band playing, you know, we played the local circuit and stuff and we were doing good, getting great press and stuff. And then I remember the bassist coming to me and say, hey, so listen guys, I need to know what to do. You know, I'm gonna either gonna go to college or we're gonna like really go for this and take this band to the next level. And I said, so I was the opposite of Pete. I was like, dude, you gotta go to college. I mean, this is a band. I mean, this, you know, we're playing the lottery here, you know? College is good. College is good. So he went to college and that kind of ended the band thing. You know, I still play, just dabbled. Um, but I always, I was always, you know, I, my parents worked. That's, you know, I knew nothing different. So straight out of high school, you know, we had technical drawing in high school. Uh, Mr. Just, Cronin? Uh, I don't That's remember who Mr. Cronin. No, I, I forget the name. I forget his name. It's terrible. Um, but this was still when you're doing, I, I grew up being artsy. You know, he had, he would have different bands. I drove logos for all yeah, the local yeah. bands and stuff. Darren drew the logo for my first band ever. Right? Yeah, that's right. Nice. Great. Yeah. So he didn't mention that in his bio. I know. I had to leave some stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so this is when it was a civil engineering firm is what I gravitated towards. And this is when you before computers, so you hand drew site plans, and that was like about as artsy as you can get at a technical level. You, you know, I drew, there's a bunch of schools around here and businesses that I ended up drawing the site plans for, you know? Here in Manassas. Here in Manassas, yeah, yeah yes. surrounding. And um, so I did that straight out of high school. So I took the work program, you'd get out of high school early, then go do that. Ended up going right into a job, you know, no college, and that lasted for eight years. And then computers, this was right at the tech boom, things started, everything started moving towards computers. Yep. So I had to learn computers, you know, because all the civil engineering was moving to computers, CAD drafting, and I did that. And it just got a little boring for me after a while, you know, it took the artsiness out of it, even though I loved the computer aspect. So that computer aspect turned into, I started a graphics design company. I would do that on the side as I was still working. Ended up quitting one day to say, let's, you know, let's go for it. We were having kids. So I did the stay home dad thing. And that's how I know it's a full-time job. And then wife would come home. I'd work at night building up my graphics business and work with a lot of local businesses here. And that, that's where I cut my chops on dealing with local businesses and, you know, their needs and, you know, the struggles and everything with that. Yeah. And then the recession hit in 20, 2008 
I fell into a really great job that uh, was recession proof and went to work for a buddy of mine and it involved web development. So my graphics became, gravitated and turned into web design because everyone at the time wanted a web page. And I remember my brother-in-law showing me code and that he could put it up on this place and everybody in the world could see it. I was like, that's the greatest thing ever, that's so cool. So I learned, taught myself web design. Um, but so and so, just to clarify, you taught yourself CAD design, I, yeah, and then got bored with that environment, <laughs> yeah, moved into graphic design, into where graphic you design. taught yourself further. I remember reading the, the manuals, those boring, thick manuals that everybody gets, and just kind of. Uh, so you took the I time would, and energy to I would to learn read through all it. those things and develop those on your own, yeah. and started a business in those arenas. With those things, okay. right? I remember being at a concert with the wife. And when I was still learning computers, and many people won't know the acronym now, but DOS. Back in the day, DOS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was reading yes. the DOS man. Anyway. Yes. So that turned into web design. Went to work for a buddy of mine, which was hardcore web development, more on the stuff on the back end that you don't see. Mm-hmm. Learned a lot there. And then uh, that industry that we service kind of dried up, and that's when Pete and I had been talking. I'd seen what he started has been doing with the candle company. They had a a website that got the job done, but I knew I could help. And uh, so I just offered to build a, we- a w- new website for him, you know, just to just to do it so that I could advance that. Things started increasing. They started doing a little graphic work. And then we redid the site again, I think, and we just decided to... Yeah. That job ended, and I said, you know what? I'm getting a little older. You know, at, at this point, it was uh, mid-ish, early 40s, mid-40s. And yeah, said, he said, you know what? If you don't, if I'm That's not, funny. if I'm not going to go for it, now. I thought we were. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And it, it was a, a just went for it. You know, said let's do, if we got to do this now or it's never going to happen. Because I Darren's incredibly you know. humble with this. Story. I think so too. I, I, you know, and, and I know it's his story to tell, but I am going <laughs> to. Please. Just an example is is I remember 25 years ago maybe he called me over to his house one night. You got to see this. <laughs> he probably must have called everybody, but one at a time. I remember those days. I wouldn't call everybody because not everybody could appreciate it. Yeah, so. he goes, you got to come over to my house and see something. And uh, it, it was Macromedia Flash. Oh, wow. This but is, yeah. It was like the day it came out. And he put something up on the screen, and all of a sudden there was a graphic that <laughs> looked different than anything you'd ever seen in your life. Mm. Right on a computer, it just looked. Remember, if any of you guys are gamers or computer guys, you saw the evolution of the way stuff looked and, and got better and better and better, yes. you know, from Pac Man to whatever. Right. And and he's like, Look at this. And it was just this graphic. What is that? It's called vector graphics or what? what? <laughs> I, you know, it, and, uh, but, yeah. he, but it was like the day it came out and he already was doing it. Nice. Like, my point is, Darren stays very cutting edge. Yes. He's, he's always. Um, he is the most researched guy I've ever met. And to a fault. Yeah, to a fault. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is. He will research instead of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, that's true. That's true. But, but he, uh, he's cutting edge. There's, he's always on the front of what's coming. And that's important in business instead of being late to the game. Right. You, you know what I mean? Right. Always cutting edge. And he's been like that his whole life. Whether, whether it was riding bikes or, or even the even the Pinewood Derby, your car was high tech. My dad put lead in the back of my car and yes. you had some kind of... <laughs> Maybe I wasn't as high tech as I thought. Yeah, yeah, we had lead in yeah. the back of our car too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, okay, so let's just really quickly, I want to hit a couple things before we move on because I want to get to Shining Soul Candle Company. But what, what I don't feel like we've hit yet is what... We've got a couple musicians here in the room tonight, a couple people interested in the music industry. What are some of the major things that stand out to you as being a part of your ability to be successful? Because so you're you're an award-winning songwriter, and I'm not trying to help you brag, and that's okay if you want to brag, but award-winning songwriter, you're a producer, you started a a recording company here locally. Mm-hmm. Um, author. Huh? What? Author. Yeah, and, and and well, yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. I hope to get there. But you're also a published author, which, by the way, if you have not read *The Moments That Make Us* by Pete Evick, I encourage you to go out today and get it. I started reading so it just lot. two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, um, I can say, to me, he speaks 
to my life and his words, and it's just an amazing experience to read that book. Um, so he, he hasn't gotten to chapter 11 yet. No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't, but uh, maybe things will change. <laughs> but the first few chapters have just been, wow, you know, I see, we're about the same age, so I see some of that unfolding. It's like, wow, that's really the same things I've experienced. I grew up with a, uh, I grew up with a single mother um, who worked very hard all the time and also supported me in, in my endeavors and yeah. has, was very encouraging along the way. I think there were some similar challenges that we faced in our youths that, mm -hmm. that I, I read your book and I reflect on. And I don't want to get off on the book, but yet if you haven't read that, please, uh, I encourage you to, you still have some down in the store, right? If you're um, I, have the I, I have think we're out of them, but yeah. uh, okay. I mean, get it on Amazon. Yeah, so go to Amazon. Uh, the Moments That Make Us, Make Us by Pete Abbott. It's a great book. Um, so, but what are some things that you think you would say stand out the most to be successful in the music industry uh, from either of you? You know, I, I, I think I have, what I believe the answer to those questions is um, the most important thing, if you ask me, is um, again, I, is, I, I tell my stories through tales of my heroes. Mm -hmm. So, because they were my inspiration. And uh, there was an entertainer, Bob Seger. I'm sure everybody knows Bob Seger. And uh, I'll never forget this most powerful, powerful thing is he's being interviewed, and the woman's kind of ball bust, kind of says to him, you know, you're this, you turned into this iconic uh, musician. You're going to go down to history with, you know, as, as a great American musician. But let's be honest, you're not the best looking guy in the world, and you know, you, you know, she, she's kind of, she's, kinda, you know, you're not the best looking guy in the world, and you. You uh, aren't, you, she just kind of just made fun of him a little bit. And she goes, so how did you succeed? And he looked at her and he goes, I showed up. Oh. And in those, in those, those couple words, it made all the sense in the world to me. And the reason that is, is because um, when you're on a local level, you, you want to get a gig. And then you're, you, it's really easy to get arrogant in the music business. It's, it's really easy. And, and I, I, the difference between me and I think everybody else that, Again, why this happened to me started with that was I would play anyway. I would play anyway. If someone wanted to hear me play or sing, I was going to play and I was going to sing. And it just didn't matter. And when you start performing, you, um, you'll play like the worst club in the world. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you get invited to the next club and then you leave that one behind. Mm -hmm. Don't forget where you came from, man. Don't forget where you came from. That's good. You know? You know, and, and I'll, I'll sound as arrogant as you want. I've played in front of crowds of 100,000 people. I've played under the arch of the, the St. Louis Arch on the 4th of July in front of 120,000 people a couple of years ago was our audience, right? But a couple of weeks later, I did an acoustic show right over here at Oakers. Absolutely. And that's how my life will always, I didn't even do this for a day. That's, okay. that's how it's always going to be for me. That's how it's always going to be. And, and, and that's it. You show up. You show up. Because you go up and you go down and the industry changes and you're cool one day and you're not cool another and then you can get cool again. And, 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 this, and, and you just show up and you do your thing and that's the first thing you do is you show up. The second thing is you don't fake it. Oh. You don't fake it. There was a time, and, and, and again Darren saw all this in my life, there was a time where the hard rock stuff ended and the grunge music came in. And uh, all my friends, all of a sudden, looked and acted like that. Right, right. I remember, I remember that transition you know? for a lot of people. And yes. and I liked some of it. I found the bands I did like, but I didn't just go. This is the new trend. I got to do this. I, I found what I liked in it, and 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 navigated through that. But I still didn't have a lot of success in that time. It's where I got my first record deal, and it's where I learned a lot about the music business. But as I was heading down that path of the alternative music scene, which is great music, I'm not saying anything wrong, it's just not, it, it wasn't organically where I loved, right? Not true to you. Yeah, I love the songs, sure. I, there, but, it, but there was an element of my life that I was faking it. And I threw all that away one day, and I just went, I don't care if uh, Poison and Bon Jovi and, and, and uh, aren't cool anymore, I love it. I love it, and I'm gonna just keep doing it. And then I ended up in Brett's band, and all that other stuff happened. Don't yeah. fake it. Don't fake it. It's important. That. No matter what you do, don't fake it. And, and then, and then, um, and then the other element is don't give up. 
Just don't give up, man. Huey Lewis, I, I talk about all these people so old, man. I don't even know if you guys know any of these people at all, but I, I, you do, know. I do. There's only a couple of people in here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, I, I think my, brain, my brain is just on the two young guitar players. <laughs> I was so fascinated by them that that's all I'm thinking about while I'm up here is inspiring them. Anthony knows you know? who they are, and, and, and I'm but, pretty sure that Abigail knows most of the names. But Huey Lewis, Huey Lewis was 45 years old. I believe it was when he had his first hit with "I Want a New Drug," yeah. uh, you know, and um, and you just don't just don't give up, just don't give up. And the other thing in the music business is, um, what, it, to make it the music business, just like the whole world's like this now. But as you said, I produce records and I learn to sing and I play piano and I play guitar and I teach and and um, there's a lot of things to do in the music business. Mm. And a lot of people get hung up on just being a famous rock and roll. You know, you can be a producer, and you can be a songwriter in Nashville, and you can give lessons. I, I, I cannot tell you the amount of times in my life that I've gone back to teaching. You know, te a guitar lesson or a piano lesson, the going rate's $35 a half an hour, right? That's what you pay a teacher. So think about that. It's $70 an hour. It's a pretty good paying job for a lousy musician that doesn't have a job. If you, if you know what I'm saying, you, 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 know, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. You know, and and I've gone back to teaching over the years uh, when times are tough, and 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 now you can do it with Skype. You know, usually on January and February is the slowest touring season, and I'll uh, just for fun now I'll offer lessons to the fans uh, and, and do it over Skype. I'll give a lesson to somebody in another country. Wow. You, you know what I mean? Because it's fun to teach and pass it on anyway. But find other things you can do in the music industry. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I think that's really good. You know, but that's how the whole world's supposed to be. And it's just something is different about the myths of it. If you just treat the music, if you say to the music industry or the entertainment industry, acting or any part of it, there's this whole myth about stars are made in Hollywood and that it's some fantasy that is different than everything else in the world. If you just treated it like you treat being a lawyer or a doctor, if you just treated it like it was normal, all the answers are there. And that's exactly what I was going to tie into that saying because I, you know, I'm on the other side where when I was doing web design, I ended up working with a lot of bands because I had my music site. So a lot of bands would find me and then they would know that, you know, just naturally that I, you know, did websites for this band that led to this band, another band. But remembering, I've seen, so I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of bands, but not all of them treated it as a business. They just treated it as, oh, why, you know, they just want sales. And they just want to play a gig, but they forget to put in all the work. You know, get on social media and post. You know, uh, show up at the gig early. You know, talk with people. Uh, they forget to treat it as a business. And yeah, amazing musicians, but they'll never go anywhere. They'll just always be just amazing musicians who never <laughs> went anywhere because they didn't put in the work. You know, there's another important story that I tell sometimes. Is um, years ago there was a band. Um, I'm going to leave the names out. This band was sure. on. This band was. On tour with Kiss, which is like them or hate them, they're the biggest band in the world. They, they if, do the numbers business wise, they are the biggest band in the world. And right now, somewhere right now tonight, they're they're sold out somewhere in the stadium. Yeah. They are. You know, they're on their end of the road the last tour. tour yeah. But but uh, anyway, um, this band was opening for Kiss, and I love them. And on nights that Kiss would take off, they would play a local club. So they'd play a stadium one night, a local club, and I got to open up for them. And uh, they were really nice to me. A lot of bands weren't nice when you got to do the opening up position. Darren played, you, you know, local bands would get to open for up and coming uh, national acts at these clubs. And, and a lot of times they, they're not the nicest guys in the world, you know. And um, these guys in this particular band were super nice to me. And I actually said to the bass player that night, I said, uh, man, you're so nice. Why are you, why are you being so nice? And uh, he was so smart. It, it, he said, uh, he said, be nice on the way up, because I'll probably run into you on the way down. Oh. Right? About five years later, after the peak, the grunge scene had come, and they they were on the way down. They, not were they on the way down. They we were down. They were down. And uh, we we came through the they came through a club, and we played with them again. And I didn't even mention that story. The guy's bass amp blew up, and I let him use our band's bass amp. Yeah. Never even said, "Hey, do you remember me?" Never nothing. And after he hooked up the bass amp, he went, told you, 
see on the way back down, he remembered me. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I actually am going to say the name of the band is a band called Danger Danger. The only reason I'm saying that is because friends of my friends from another band may think I'm talking about them, but I'm not. So, <laughs> yeah. We want to make sure we're straight on who we're talking yeah, about yeah. here. No, I, I think that's an important experience. So, so, that, so that's the other thing is, is um, you know, the answer to everything is just be good to everyone. That's the answer. It's answered everything. So that, does, that is the exper exact experience that I believe you have instilled in all of the team players at Shining Soul, which right. we're getting ready to move into. Uh, in, I, no, no, please, I, please. I have to read. So it's interesting because I say that, and a lot of people that know me go, well, he's such an aggressive human being. How does he, how does, it doesn't fit in, but it does. It does. Because like I said, you have to be relentless and you have to be a shark and you have to be a soldier and you have to be you have to fight. This world sucks right now, man. Yeah, Everything yeah. it all you were talking about the school system is broken, the world's broken, buddy. And and I lose my faith a lot, man. I go down and I get to the bottom and I, I lose not faith I don't want to talk about religion, I mean faith yeah, yeah. in humanity. Yeah. I, I I get real low about that. I get really and, frustrated. And and Darren is the one that brings the be good to people. I was almost, that was almost gone. That was almost out of me when me and Darren partnered up. Darren came at the exact right time to lift me back up because he's the one with the pure soul. You know, I've seen the bottom. I've seen evil and I've seen rock and roll and, and I've been there. Darren, Darren is the inspiration because Darren's good to people. At all costs, Darren's good to people. Every time I walk into Shining Soul, it doesn't matter who I, I am greeted by, it's a great experience. Uh, Elizabeth is, is an amazing person. Um, Darren and I have always had good conversations, which is actually what led to, um, thank, thankfully, <coughs> having the, the two of you here tonight. Right. It, it, it took, hey, you know, just being good people. That, right. I didn't ask for anything. I didn't, you know, there was nothing there besides just enjoying who people were and yeah. right. so that's certainly I can feel that and I see that when I walk into Shining Soul Candle Company so that, that means a lot that that's powerful it would. I, I mean it sounds harsh but if 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 someone that worked for us did not give someone that experience I would literally fire them I would give them a chance I would try to coach them but if they and some people can't do it I mean yeah, you can sure. look at it, business after business some business it's, it's just some, not in some people and if I had an employee to do that, and I would let them go if they couldn't achieve, because that does no good for anybody. Yeah, you know? man, that's so I think that by itself is powerful. There's been a couple moments tonight that that I think we could just stop the talk, but <laughs> <laughs> I do want to get to okay. So <laughs> rock and roll, great thing. Um, a lot of up and down experiences. Uh, a lot that goes into being successful musicians. You got that YouTube? Okay. You, you know, since you fast, let me just let me please. finish that. <laughs> yes, please. Because the music business has changed, but it hasn't changed. The problem today is a lot of people go think that the internet. A lot of the old guys think the internet ruined the music business, and a lot of the mm, the new people in the industry and a lot of the new people in the industry think the internet is this great gift. What is a great gift? I'll never forget. I, I'm at that age where I was there when it all started, and I watched half of my friends panic in the record industry, and I watched half of the people get excited. I was one of the people who got excited, because so all of a sudden I could email someone in Sweden my new song. And that was like, all of a sudden, all of a sudden the power was back in my hand. It wasn't in the lawyers and the record company owners, and that's the gift that you guys have that we didn't have. The power is in your hands. You can make yourself a star now. You, you know what I mean? Like, th that's powerful. But the flip side of that is a lot of people say, oh, I put my video on YouTube and, and let's just hope. Yeah. No one came. No. Uh, you still have to go door to door. Yeah. The second you decide to be an entertainer, you are a salesman and you are a marketer. And if you're really going to do it, you better take some marketing classes and you better learn that, that don't say, oh, I feel like a whore selling myself out. You are. You're going to knock door to door and you're going to go, please listen to my song. And you're going to do that until everyone on this planet's heard your song, or or get out of the way and let someone serious enough have that to go reach everyone on the planet. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really profound. But the internet's a powerful tool, but it's also made a lot of people lazy. Yes, it has. Yes. So 
No, and that's really good. I agree from a marketing perspective that it, the internet has definitely made people lazier um, or lazy in general. Right. But if you're in the music business, do, you not, be out do not lie to yourself. You're selling yourself. Every person you meet, everything you do, you are your product and you are selling yourself. You, you want everyone you meet to want to know your song. So they want, you want them to like you or you want them to, whatever it is you're selling, you want them to believe it. Yes. And, and, but that's what you are. Don't, don't, don't go out of the house without your kiss makeup on if you're going to be kissed. <laughs> that's it. Which happened one, once or yeah. twice. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, okay, so um, we're, we're, I, we might go over on time. Let's go. Okay? Okay. I'll stay here all night. So let, let, <laughs> me too. This is great. So far, I'm loving this. Uh, so now Rockstar, uh, no, I don't know if that's what you call yourself. No, I work a, for one. You work for a rock star. <laughs> You've been in the rock and roll industry. You've been in the advertising and marketing industry. How did we get from the rock industry, rock and roll industry, is that good? Rock and roll industry working Me for a rock star yeah. to a candle company. Uh, you got to get a short version. We'll be here all night. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> further hard. Um, at the end of the day, unless you're Brett Michaels, or unless you're Justin Bieber, or unless you're Paul McCartney, unless you're one of the chosen few. The, yeah, the front, the front runners. Yeah, there's no retirement, and there's no, you know, I mean, there's 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 COD, cash on delivery. Yeah. Day's done. This is what I made today, and um, and that started to scare me. Wow. You know, um, and and the other thing was, I want my kids look like they're going down my path of. No college and no, um, you know, it frightens me. My, my, my children's life frightened me, and I wanted to find something to inspire them. I wanted to teach them. They have the entrepreneurial spirit, entrepreneurial spirit, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to show them that if you sold something for $25, you didn't make $25. And I wanted, because, you know, my, my youngest son was buying uh, something at 7 Eleven and selling it to his friends for less than he was buying it for, but he thought he was in business at school. Mm. <laughs> you know, I mean, in other ages, he thought he was, he started a business, sure, you know what I mean? Sure, And uh, uh, it just, um, and, and like I said earlier before, I've watched, I watched all my friends in high school. We were in that point where the internet came out and all my friends went to school to learn to be something. And half those jobs disappeared, man. Yeah. Half those jobs just don't even exist anymore. You know, and the yeah. internet came, it, it has to, we experienced, we don't talk about it much in our generation, but we experienced what had to be very much like the industrial revolution. It had to be a very similar effect to all of a sudden the world's different and these jobs are all gone and now we have to do this. Now we have to work on computers instead of this. And I remember my dad was an auto mechanic at Battlefield Ford right here his whole life. And toward the end, he made it to his retirement, but toward the end, he couldn't comprehend. He'd have to go back and learn the new computers that were fixing cars and the chips in the cars and the, all that stuff. That was a lot different than, than turning wrenches. And, and you know, so, yes. so I remember so many of my friends just not having jobs. And, and, and the world changed like that for our generation. And I fear that's going to happen over and over again because it happens faster. The evolution of technology happens faster and faster. Like, what's the word? There's a word for that. Expediate? Is that the word? I don't know. I don't know. There's a word. Know, that means, or at least I don't know what you're searching it, for. But it keeps going. And it's yeah. getting... Expedite. It's getting Expedite. Harder. Expedite. But, but I don't... But I, but, what's that? That's it good, too. That's the word. Yeah. Exponential. Yes. Oh, yes. And Jeff so, Davis. and uh, so I'm, I'm frightened. Frightened to death that my children may pick a career and by the time they're ready to be in it, it doesn't exist. Wow. And so, so Shining Soul, making candles was, have you ever heard the term macaroni necklace? Like you go to the loony bin and you make macaroni necklaces? Yeah, huh? That's kind of what making candles was for me. I'd gone crazy. I was on tour for nine months. I hadn't been home for nine solid months all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I came home and my marriage had fallen apart and I was sitting in my house all by myself and uh, just staring at the walls. And I just went, I've never done anything but play guitar. I've been playing guitar for five years old. And I'm gonna make a candle. Out of nowhere, just hit me. Like it was almost, maybe it was a gift. Maybe it was a gift from something. But it, it was instant. It was like that. And that was it. It was, it was you know, split a dime. I'd never thought about making a candle in my life. I'd never thought about it. It never even occurred to me. And then I was gonna make a candle. 
And I went to the hobby store and I got some stuff. And then all of a sudden, for about nine months, it was all I thought about. And I figured it out. And then as I figured it out, I found out that the candle industry is a $2.5 billion business a year in the United States. At the time. At the time. Yeah. yeah. It's, this yeah. Was, so it's what, only what grown, time frame were we so talking about? Huh? What time frame? That was about seven years ago. Okay. Yeah. And it, and it's, it, grows, it grows every year. The candle industry is in one of the top right. five That's growing right. home decor businesses to be in every yeah. year. And so anyway, um, between that and wanting to teach my kids something, I just said, let me start a small business selling candles. And there it was. And then I got so overwhelmed that uh, it would have fallen apart if Darren wouldn't step in. And that's, this is where we can bring Sarah in. So yeah. when, he, when he figured that out and he would make the candles, well, he had to go back on tour. And this, you know, they were doing some pretty heavy duty tour cycles. So, so you're that's still where pretty heavy on tour cycles, aren't you? Not like it was, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yeah. It's heavy yeah. for most people, but Brett's a workaholic, man. Yeah. We, we did 300 dates one year. Like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? And and still, a couple of years ago, we did like 200, and I think we did 150 or 60 this year. I mean, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it's a, it's heavy. He thinks we're light. He thinks we're not working. <laughs> but, so so that, you're, but that's you're running the candle business, and you're touring up to 300 yeah. dates a year. Yeah. So somewhere obviously between. candles needed to still get out. They were selling to the website, yeah. and that's where Sarah came in. Yeah. Sarah's uh, husband... Was his first employee yeah, at Clear Sound I, I Recording, recording over off Euclid there, at the time? Yeah, and Ed was my employee. Yeah. But the other thing was, um, I, I didn't think the industry wanted this to be the face of Candle Company. Mm. And Sarah is the Sarah's is close. She's she's one of the greatest friends I've ever had in my life. And but she she looked apart. Mm. I mean, I come from the entertainment industry where it images everything, and Sarah looked like the kind of person you'd want to buy a candle from. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So I went to her and I said, well, "Do you want to be the face of this company?" And uh, you know, she's she's lost a child. She has another child that is really, really, really sick, and uh, and so she's a stay. She stays at home all the time. Yeah. And she had the ability to do this, and and she needed something. She needed something to dig into other than the the uh, you know. Dealing with Stay, staying home in, in your own mind yeah, all the time. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't get over the loss of a child. You don't get over it. And so this this was this was helped her. But the other thing that 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 the gift in Sarah is we make fun of her because she is a social media freak and she's <laughs> she's she's an eighteen year old girl in a thirty year old woman's body or brain. But she she um, her fingers on pop culture. She right. knows things. So now we tie back into marketing. Yes. Right. She knows things that we don't know. We're not, we don't know. I, I'm, this is all about honesty, right? Yes. Uh, me and Darren talk about it all the time. Who wants to buy a candle from two 50 year old metalheads? Not 50 yet. Calm down. There. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Don't, don't rush me. Does that, does that make we sense? can edit that out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. So, so Sarah, in my brain, was the face. Because for the first two years, I didn't tell anyone it was me. Sarah begged me to say, just tell the world it's you. And I didn't want to do it. I was, we were trying to build a company without the merit of my success. In the Absolutely. And we got to a certain level where it was successful. And then Sarah just begged me, said, just let everyone know. Just, just do it. And, um, and then one day, we told everyone it was me. And then sales grew right away. And then it got out of control. It got, it got to the point where we can't, we couldn't do it. I don't know. I didn't know how to do any of the stuff that Darren had to do. I don't know if you guys know the, the Shark Club and the Prof, or Shark uh, Shark Tank and yeah. the Profit yeah, and, the and all that stuff. That's his dream, man. He he wishes he was that guy for the Profit. He just he just watches it all day long. And uh, but but he has a he has a a mind for business that I don't. So that, by the way, that's one of the other um, facts, that, fun facts that Darren sent me is that he watches way too much of I do. the profit. I do. So you know, some of those shows are for entertainment, you know, and it's very obvious they're for entertainment. I like to find the shows that are mostly real, and I found that I think in the profit. You know, some stuff gets embellished, but if you watch the profit, we both of us have picked up so much of that tips from that that we've applied to our business Every day. stuff still to come but we're, we're like kids with the profit yeah, we like are. I think about I think about back in, in when we were 
growing up in uh, 90210, remember that show? Yeah, and yes. everyone would like calling each other, did you watch 90210? Did you see what happened? You know, you know. By the way, for the younger people in the room, yeah. the original 90210, yeah, yeah. not the one that came out a couple years ago. But that's me and Darren. Yeah. Darren, like the other night, Darren's like, are you watching? I'm like, yes, I'm watching. Can you believe yeah. that? Yeah, that's, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and of course, I had to pause it so I don't miss anything. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, so Sarah, Sarah was the face of, and, and Sarah has come up with uh, two of the products that have kept us in business. Our, Sarah's, yeah. the, Sarah's the one that came up with Mermaid Co., which for the last two years has been our best selling candle. Mm-hmm. In every store, not just here at this store, but we have outlets as far as, you know, Washington <coughs> State and California and right. Florida and Texas and, and she. Bed she, Bath and Beyond. And Bed Bath Beyond, and that's growing. But, but she made the product that she, she, she wrote our hit song yeah. with, with Mermaid Co. I love that analogy. You, you know? And then she followed it, she came up with the unicorn tail thing, which is, is um, that's another pop culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And I would never thought of that. I wouldn't. Have, you I'm know? with you. Yeah. Right. So it's 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 perfect storm between the three of us. I, I could, and you know, it's funny because Valerie's in the audience. I remember when I first met Valerie. She one time she she said, "You're just the most grateful guy I've ever met in my life." Is are you really that happy about everything? And I, I am. I'm grateful that I said that. You said you're the most grateful guy on the internet. <laughs> you're always so grateful and talking about thanking everybody. You're, I think I still have the text. But anyway, uh, yeah, I am. I'm, I am. I, 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 I'm not much of a religious guy, to be honest with you, but something gave me the gift. Something gave me the people I just sure. be around. It's who you surround yourself by. And, and yeah, so. Man, that, that's profound by itself as well. The people you surround yourself with, because that's really what we're trying to do here is just to strengthen and build our community of business owners, like-minded people, entrepreneurs, startups, whatever that looks like, right? Yeah. Um, and, and the idea is is just really to help inspire, educate, maybe we add some value to their lives one way or another. Uh, and, and I think um, we haven't, I, I don't, what, what time you got, Jonathan? Okay, so we still, uh, we're gonna go a couple more minutes if that's all right. But, <laughs> Because I really want to know. So you you've taken this candle company to. I, so I knew that you were here locally. I knew that you had just recently gotten the the. It's a is it a test thing with Bed Bath and Beyond? It's a two store test right now. It's maybe soon to be three, but they're talking about spanning out to fifty. Is it, and that's starting yeah. here locally. Yeah. yeah. Roughly, but your next head. I knew you, you. You kind of. So we talk. You're a beach bum like I am. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nags Head, Outer Banks area. You've got some outlets there. I didn't realize you were over in Washington. And that's, I, so that's that's awesome. But you, So you started with this online presence is really what we're talking That's kind of where Sarah came in. Her and her husband helped you expand the online presence and keep that going yeah, yeah. while you were busy on tour. Her husband didn't help, no. He shipped. <laughs> <laughs> she made him ship. We make fun of Ed a lot. <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, yeah. So, but that's so. Sarah really was integral in the online presence, and then, uh, and, and then that started to explode, and and then we wanted to grow the business more. That's yeah. kind of where Darren comes in, right? Yeah, right. that's where Darren played the part of the profit. <laughs> the marketing experience that Darren brought to the table. So Darren's been quite humble tonight. I'm going to call you out. Um, some of the things he sent me were were very impressive from a marketing and advertising background. Um, he talked a little bit earlier about how he got there, but Darren was managing multiple accounts with ad spend over $250,000 a month each. And so I think that's important to the conversation when we're gr- talking about growing this candle business, right? We're not talking about just one or two candles. We're talking about a lot of candles and how do we grow that and, and make this thing bigger than it already is and continue to grow and expand exponentially expand that um i I think that's important because that's really where darren came in right yeah yeah, very much um and and so you were able with you got some contributing um thoughts ideas concerns challenges along the way that that you think would benefit yeah benefit the audience so that one job that i had started during the when the recession hit that was kind of recession proof uh, I was afforded, because I dig in and learn stuff on my own, I'd started as web development, and part, a big part of our lead generation with that company, uh, we had a guy just running our Google AdWords account. This is before Facebook ads kind of really got steam. And he just, it, you know, 
he was he would talk at this conference, he would talk at that conference, and but he just wasn't doing it for us. You know, it wasn't working out. And uh, I dabbled uh, on the side with my own stuff, so I knew enough to be dangerous, and I and I knew enough marketing that I, I think I could talk myself into this. So I went to the boss guy and uh, boss man. It was a very open environment, so I went to the boss and I said, you know, let, let me try. You know, we can't hurt. I mean, we're spending this kind of money and we're losing, you know, crazy amounts of money a month. And this is when this guy was spending 300 some a month. And uh, so he said, you know what, let's go for it. You know, that guy got sacked and, and he just gave me some parameters to work within. And then, you know, it's just a matter of sitting down, figuring out, doing a lot of testing. And luckily, they had the budget that I could do that with. So I was very thankful that I got to learn with that kind of budget. It was, it, and it ended up being about a quarter million. But through that learning process, you know, I ended up saving them, you know, like eighty some thousand a month from just digging into. It. And of course, when you learn something like that, uh, Google AdWords, which of course parlays into Facebook ads, which are the big rage now. Google's still relevant. Absolutely, you can take that to any job, and you know. At the time, even five, probably even five years ago now, if you would have said that I would be running a candle company with Pete and Sarah, I was, you know, you know candles, what are you talking about? Yeah. But marketing, uh, advertising. It's only that $2.5 billion number. Yeah, right. <laughs> it is funny. I, I'll, actually, I'll actually hit on that. So, uh, but marketing, advertising, and web, which are my three core things, yeah. they apply to any industry, anything. So I just happened to parlay that into candles. And so when this started becoming more reality, I actually sat down and did my over research. It, yeah, two, you know, two and a half billion industry. You know, how many people here have candles in their house? I, you know, I was not a candle guy, but I had candles in my house. I got candles from Shining Soul in my house. It, everyone, a large chunk of people, we have our candles or wax warmers. That fireplace it one heavy. is great. Yeah. <laughs> Started it off. So after I did that research, it's like, there's something here. You know, that he's, and now I see why he's making candles, <laughs> you know? And, um, but it's, it's really started as a, kind of a, a way to take your mind off of everything oh, yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the road and, yeah. I just and never, not I, having a hobby. I never had a hobby in my yeah. life, so right. I wanted one, and that became. Right. And then we had some. But then I became so passionate about it that I became obsessed. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know? And even though this has kind of taken off fast now, you know, really both of us in different ways have spent the last 20, 25 years building up to this point. Oh, you yeah. Know? Every moment's preparing for you the know, next. Every, everything we've learned <laughs> and, and done uh, just happened to be all applying to this, you know. And it goes back to like the profits now, but. You know, at the time I was reading Entrepreneur Magazine, Inc. Magazine, Fast Company. You know, I'd go through all the articles. I'd see the links to these sites and their stories. I'd go visit their sites and read more of their stories. And, you know, yeah. it's all just, I, I it's an endless inspiration. Yeah, it's just endless inspiration. You get caught up in it. Um, but all that helped towards this. And, yeah. you know, uh, and it does parlay, you know, hitting on the, the being nice thing. You know, it's kind of like that scene in Roadhouse where, if you haven't seen, you got to go watch Roadhouse now. But when he's teaching the other bouncers, you know, if a guy insults your mom and says she's this, that, you be nice. If someone punches you in the mouth, you stand up and you be nice. You know, and, you know, most of the customers we get in here are pretty good. Sometimes you get the edgy ones come in. Yeah. But you'd be. We've had a few that have had a few too many drinks. A few too many drinks. But it is so funny. <laughs> It, it's so funny to watch the look on people's face when they walk into the shop and you greet them and it's just almost sometimes this look of shock that they got said, hey, how you doing? I, you know, welcome to the shop. I think that's You catch huge. them off guard. I, th I think that's huge. I think yeah. I, in my personal opinion, throwing that in here into y'all's conversation, but I, I believe that we're, we're getting away from this big box experience because people are missing that personal engagement yeah. that we get in these small towns. I, I want to interject. Inter yeah, please. please. The big box is not the enemy. No? Sam Walton just had one store in Arkansas. He just did it right and succeeded. And they were so great. he shouldn't be... The whole Walmart's the enemy thing bums me out, man. Because everyone wants to be Walmart. You want to be Walmart. You want that money. You want Sam's money. And you want to be the greatest store that was ever made. You just don't want him to be it. And then I'll, I'll say the flip side of that, and, the, and the, 
It, that's true. My, mine is just the personal experience. Yeah, right. No, I get it. But I, used to, I used to go to Best Buy all the time. Yeah. You know, the tech stuff, the game, video games at the time, music when it, they had music on the shelves. And I stopped going after a while because they started swapping out real knowledgeable people sure. that staffed yeah. the store. That's true. With, with just. I don't want to call them nobodies, but they're people to just grab a job. They can't tell you about what they're selling. And that's what I was about to say, yeah. is the big box is not the enemy that we relate to. They could, that could be part of their policy to have good employees. They just don't. Right. So, you no, know what I'm yeah, saying? It's not the big yeah. box is the problem. It's, 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 it's the people. Yes. yes. It's, it's the lack, or, or it's the lack it, of the personal interaction and the right. experience right. or the willingness to learn. And engage with or remembering what he said about you know band when it's starting down here and becomes up here, forgetting where you came from. So if you're a small store and then you add another store, another store, another store, and all of a sudden you're nationwide, yeah. worldwide, don't forget how to be nice. Right. Don't forget how to treat people nice. And That's it goes true. both ways. You know? So I, I have interesting stories. I feel like uh, you know um, the Goo Goo Dolls are one of my favorite bands in the world, and I saw them when they were a punk band before Name and before all the pop hits. But as they grew and got hugely successful, I still love them. Mm -hmm. But they're from a town in Buff or near Buffalo, New York. Or they're considered they're from Buffalo. Right. And uh, once they got big, the whole town turned their back on Right? Because that was their band. And now they're too big. Same thing happened to Green Day, believe it or not. Even though Green Day is considered one of the greatest rock bands in history now, mm -hmm. their core fans turned their back on them at first with, with their success. And that happens a lot. So there's a, that, that's a hard balance is, you know, imagine Shine Soul is ours. It's all of ours right here, right? Yeah, it's part of this community. It's all of ours. But don't, if you think for one second that as soon as our candles are in every bed, death, and beyond in the country, that half of these people are not going to go, oh, you got too big. It happens. It's awful, but it happens. No, that's I, I think that's a great point that you brought up. So I was going to ask about some of the challenges that you've already faced. I think that's a, a potential challenge in the future. Do you have any comments about challenges you've faced along the way so far with growth? Tying into control? that, yes, tying into that last job, it's, it becomes a different ball game when you're playing with your own money. So the challenge is knowing that you... You, you have to invest money in order to make money, and that's scary. scary it's thing. really scary. We're, we're still, I mean, we're three years in, and we're growing and growing, but, I mean, we're still having to put money in for various things, and it becomes really scary. you got to have, we've learned massive patience, you know, especially with, like, the bed bath thing. That's the toughest thing we've done. So Not because it's a big while. box, yeah. I mean, just to well, get it was six months before we even were allowed to speak about it. Yeah, it's just the whole when you deal with the big box store, the whole set of hurdles and loops that you have to go through to integrate with their stores, the software you have to have, you know, the specific rules you got to follow with how the label a box, and you know, it, it's just. But we had the patience to work through that, as frustrating as it was. Um, you know, we've learned, you know, having our shop here to have patience. Like right now, we're in the down season. Yeah. You know, we had to, we had to experience that, you know, like, where did everybody go? You know, well, we've learned you that can, now from those, data. That's one of those things that you can be told. Yeah. But until you feel until it. Until you experience it, it you becomes a different thing. That. Well, let me, let me, so I, I don't, I don't know offhand. So we do have a couple people who might have an interest in that in the future. But so what does it take? in the simplest form, to go from having a store here in Manassas, right, a brick and mortar location, or even an online business, and get, just having a conversation with somebody to potentially get into a place like that, Bath and Beyond. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to pick up and the we phone. we were. We were. We were for a little bit. We didn't let anyone see it, but we would call Just because it's a like big, TV. giant something, whether it's, whether it's Bed Bath and Beyond or whether it's this place we know has five shops or if it's someone that seems intimidating online don't be afraid to contact them and just either Where maybe not start? even pitch them right away don't even pitch them right away just okay. say hey like there's a guy I'll, I'll put it out there I, I'm, I'm going to send him a candle but if you're in here and you're into business you may already know the name Gary Vaynerchuk yeah. right Absolutely. you know he gives everything away he has gotten as big as he has because he gives everything away I'm, we're going to send him a candle at some point. 
with his own that. label. Actually, I'll tell the story. Of one, what, I, I here's what happened. Him. I can tag him on this video. Yeah, here's a real world thing. We're not allowed to say the company name, but we actually semi recently had to get a warehouse for production. We used to make everything right in our store. We mm -hmm. outgrew it, mm -hmm. and we had to do that because one, the bed bath, getting ready for that, and two, we we currently make candles for another candle company, mm -hmm. but our name's nowhere on it. So we, we like white, white label. label. Yeah. yeah. And that happened because I saw uh, an ad pop up in my Facebook feed, and it was an interesting product, and I saw that they were starting a decor store down in Alabama. So it's like, the decor store needs to sell candles. They need to sell candles. They need to sell candles. So I Marketing emailed, Marketing. and I got, I got the, uh, the uh, whatever you call it, the, the in-between guy. It's like, yeah, you know, I'll pass it on. We'll see. I goes, all right. Well, I hit him back. Say, hey, just checking in. You know, a couple of days later, give him a little time. Yeah, you know, he saw it. He, he, he's going to get what you. He's thinking it over and stuff. So why don't you give me your address, and I'll, we'll send you some samples. You know, that way they can actually smell them and have them. And so finally he said, you know what? We, we're interested in seeing samples. I don't know if we'll do it, but let's do that. Yeah. So he gave the address, said, great, it's on. We grabbed our best sellers, but in the one of them, what I did is I took their logo and I made a custom label put it on the candle so it looked like their candle, oh, yeah. and sent that along with the package. The guy, the, the main dude, called me up a couple weeks later probably, said, hey, you sent this, I, you know, your attention to detail, you guys went out, out, you did above and beyond, you went out of the box, outside the box, and that impressed him. That single, taking the time to do that, the not just yeah. contact them, not be afraid to contact someone, but just that simple hour it took to put that label together got us a potential in the future, you know, mini. Did you, Lots say, of candles. Did you say hour it took? Whatever. It doesn't it take you four okay. hours to do anything. It doesn't. <laughs> so <laughs> lots of candles in the future. Lots of candles in the future potential. Well, well now, so, it's happening now. Yeah. So it's happening now. It's happening now. Their existing business uh, with their other product is a thirty to forty million dollar business. Wow! They just happen to start so that one decor really store. Yeah. So if they can just grab a little bit, little percentage of that, and sell candles, which it's starting to climb, then we'll white label. Man, we'll white so label all day long, yeah. you know, because then we can take that and we get no benefit from that. I mean, obviously there's the money part, you know, and it, but we're able to take that money, buy in bigger volumes for our stuff, Continue get the grow. price breaks on those things, yeah. and then take that cash and apply it towards other things to build our own brand. So, Continue to grow. Yeah. That's, that, and, and, if some, and if we weren't doing those candles for them, someone else will. Someone else will. That, that's an important part about business, to be honest with you. That, me and him talk about that a yeah. lot, and, and I actually learn that from Brett sometimes, is uh, if you don't do it, someone else will. Yeah. So just do it. But Gary Vaynerchuk's one. We're going to send a candle, and he's going to have it on one of his uh, one of his thousand well, he's daily going to know shows about this next week before yeah. he gets the yeah. candle. So, so we'll catch the candle goes. That's it. So, and I got all his books. I watch all his content. Yeah, you know, unbelievable guy. guy. You know the amount of work he puts in, and he, he and I saw a that's clip the, from that's him today. The hyper guy with the yeah. wears the t-shirt. Yeah. yeah, he's awesome. And I saw he's, I saw him say thing. Yeah. I mean, that's and he's real. He's real. Yeah. He's the like real deal. Real. He'd be he's doing real. this if he was making ten dollars, you know, a week. This is just what he loves. It just happens that his hobby turned into something massive. It's fascinating. All right. So um, I'm, I'm going to stop us right here. I yeah. think this was, I personally think it was a fascinating conversation. We hit a lot of great points. Um, we did talk a little bit about your book, Pete. And I think what, what's important here is that it kind of all ties into what I read in your book is back to the title of your book, which is these moments in our lives that sure. make us along the way. And that, I think that's what I was hearing along this whole story tonight. Yeah. So, um, Everything I didn't, prepares you for the next one. I, and that's, that's outstanding. So I'm going to open it up really quickly for just a few questions if we have any. Um, otherwise, we'll cut it off there. So if there's any questions, um, we've got a microphone so we can get you into the recording. Anybody have any questions? Anything I didn't? Please. You, uh, Laura. <coughs> so... Um... So being entrepreneurs, you guys are kind of like the leading edge pioneers of the market. You're exploring, I mean, you're kind of like catching waves, you know, and you said the world is crazy. Um, the market is a lot of fun if you can figure it out, and it sounds like you guys are starting to figure it out. Um, 
you're tapping into Bed Bath & Beyond, which is an entirely, that's a huge next step for you. So how do you feel you're going to prepare for this within your team to make sure that you're fully equipped for this new opportunity? For, what was the last question? The, the new opportunity being Bed Bath & Beyond or mm -hmm. what comes after? Maybe all of it. Both. <laughs> yeah. All of it. Yeah. Both. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. good question. I, I think that, that, that the answer goes back to to me, me, Darren, and Sarah, like McDonald's secret sauce managed. Uh, it, it, the elements all work together. Darren, Darren's prepared for anything at all times. So he, Darren prepares to prepare. And <laughs> it's true. And I'm resentless and and relentless, and 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 I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a storm and I'm a train wreck. And Sarah is a oh I, I am I, I wake up in the morning and I, I destroy everything and start over again every day. But that's the creative process. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. And, and 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 Darren is 100 percent prepared for that every day now. Wow. And and Sarah um, Sarah has this heart and she has purpose. Sarah has purpose. That's because it. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when this succeeds to the point where there's just money to throw away, she's going to cure that disease that she took her child. Man. And so she has purpose, and I have passion, and Darren has knowledge beyond belief, and that prepares us for anything. And I'll, and I'll add to that, one of the keys to that will be we are big about... You know, and this goes to our staff. We're big about building up the people around us. You know, I'm not I'm not going to be able to do the shipping all the time. He always yells at me for doing shipping. There's other things I can be doing. It's building up people around, hiring good people, and not just hiring workers, but hiring people. Like we've hired, uh, I guess we won't use names just in case, but we've hired someone uh, over a year ago, and she went from doing X to now she's doing you know, YZ and different things. You know, she she is she's taking what employee. we're teaching and she's utilizing it and growing with it. We want people we can build up and who want to take that opportunity. I, that'll probably be one of my weak points is I don't have tolerance or patience for people who don't grasp at opportunity. And not that I look down on them, but I feed off of people who are hungry and, and want to be be something yeah. better and want to go from making this to maybe making that because they took the time to learn what we taught them. Uh, not just selling candles. I mean, it, when you're in there, it's not just selling candles. It's, it's marketing. It's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's psychology. Experience. It's, it's everything, but it's being genuine and being nice. Yeah. So it's building up people around us so that they can help us grow to those points too. No, that's good stuff. Yeah. It's funny. There's one of the lessons in, in life and business. We, 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 we talk about kindness and helping everybody and there was something someone was saying a few minutes ago that inspired me to, to say you talk about customers and biting your tongue it's, uh, you know sometimes with customers are rude or stuff and other business people and stuff and uh, you know another huge lesson just that in life because as you can see when I talk about everything it, it's not the business this isn't business this isn't music this is life it's, it's life and, and, and two wrongs don't make a right is one of the other things and that's something people people get spiteful and revenge becomes a big deal to people, man. And it's a, and, and it's a waste of time. You waste your time with, with you know, someone did this, now I'm going to do this. And, and that can really get in your way. It Absolutely. can get in your way. It stops you dead in right. your tracks. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and Darren's really good at that. Darren's really good at it. And uh, you have to. I mean, it's like the Gainer, Gary Vaynerchuk thing, you know, giving everything away. He loves this guy. I do. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> I've learned a lot from his stuff. But, like, I'll, I'll use an example in here. When... Uh, Dennis and Kathy start knock on wood. You know, they had a shop here. Yeah. You know, saw them building out. You go and introduce yourself. Say, what are you doing? Hey, we're two doors down. Let me know if you need anything. You know, if you need to know where to buy bags for checkout, let me know. I've already researched. This is the best price. You know, you help each other. And it's just amazing. It floors me sometimes the amount, lack of helping each other that some business owners have. Right. I anyway, and let's clarify. We're not talking about here. Not necessarily here. We're not talking about downtown. Just in general. We're just talking just in about general. in general. He knows, just he in knows general. everything about every business. Every so, business. yeah, it's just in you general. Know. But but to answer your question about being prepared, the best way to be prepared is not to be prepared, man. Just jump off the cliff. Jump Our off the cliff. What? 
Anything, whatever it is. Whatever. Just do it. Just whatever not, it is. Not just to steal it. from any other company, yeah. but yeah. Just, right. just get out there and do it. You have to go for it. I spent a lot of years preparing to be prepared, you know, getting ready That's to get hard. ready. And you, uh, if, what's, I think there's a term it calls analysis paralysis. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I, that was one of my faults. It's still, you know, Pete keeps me in check. It's still a fault sometimes. It's, it's our balance. It's the balance. It is a balance. The beginning but because, you have to go for know, it at some point. To me, it's right. like, I've started like five businesses during this conversation. Yeah. Right. You know, in my head, I'm like, you know, it, you know, I got a new idea. Let's do this. And I got a new idea. Let's do this. And I don't mean it's an idea. I'm, I'm going to yeah. call Darren and I got to do this. Got to do this. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it's the, it's the perfect balance. I, I we got lucky, man. Yeah. We got lucky because because yeah, I I, I want to jump off the cliff, and he wants to at least look. Let's over see how high it is. So we got a parachute <laughs> before we go. You know, no, but because of that, because of that, now we have a rhythm. He'll lower me down. <laughs> Yeah, so I yeah. still get to jump that off helps. the cliff. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. You got to belay at the top just to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop us there and just say that I think it was a great conversation. Mm -hmm. I hope that everybody here got something out of this. Um, and so somebody's telling me something about, make sure you get some more food. Huh? Oh, my gosh. My daughter asked me today, I almost forgot the most important question about this entire Oh, uh, you almost got in big trouble. So my daughter um, has got this thing going on. Uh, do you like Nestle Crunch Bars? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay. Have you seen our weight? <laughs> <laughs> She's just taking like a all survey. Of and and I, thank you, Evan. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do without you. My daughter would be We love Nestle Crunch Bars. What, is she selling them? Or? Um, no, she oh. she has an ongoing bet with a friend of hers. Oh. She does not like Nestle Crunch oh. Bars. And so far, we haven't found well, one of should. our yes. You should. <laughs> That's the one with the blue wrapper, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah blue and Crunch red bread. letters, I think. There you go. Yes. Always pay attention to the blue. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it was amazing. I appreciate y'all. Yes, you're absolutely. Great. Awesome. So, give, us, give our guests a great startup grind. Thank you. I hope you'll join us again uh, next month. And please hang out, get some food from from Is, there, food. is there anything left? Is there anything left? <laughs> a little bit. All right. Okay. Get a little bit of food. <laughs> um, have some drinks, whatever. Hang out, uh, enjoy yourselves, and thank you all again for coming out. All right. Thank you.